United Earnings Conference Call for Q4 and financial year 23-24. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Mundra from Investor Relations Team. Thank you and over to you. Thanks, Jayashree. Hello, everyone. This is Mayank from the Investor Relations Team. I welcome you all to the Britannia Earnings Call to discuss the financial results of Q4 and financial year 2324. Joining us today on this earnings call is our Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Varun Devi, Executive Director and CEO, Mr. Rajneet Singh Kohli, Executive Director and CFO, Mr. N. Venkat Raman, Chief Commercial Officer, Sales and Replenishment, Mr. Bipin Kataria, and Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Amit Joshi. The analyst presentation is uploaded on our website. Before I pass it on to Mr. Varunberry, I would like to draw your attention to the sales hardware statement in the presentation. Over to Mr. Varunberry's remarks on the performance. Good morning. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost the management connection. Please stay connected while we reconnect this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management team back on the call. Sir, we are sorry. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning uh, to all of you and thanks for being on the call. Uh, let me jump into the presentation. So uh, on page three, uh, the point here, I'm not going to delve much deeper than this, but the point is that India is doing uh, much better than all the other countries uh, from a, a GDP growth st uh, standpoint. However, the, the only point to be made is that uh, private consumption is down. Uh, the GDP numbers are looking good because of uh, the gross fixed capital formation that's happening in the country. Uh, however, we are confident that uh, as we go through this year, uh, you know, things will change on the private consumption side as well. Uh, moving on to page five, uh, this is our performance scorecard for the full year 23-24. So if you look at it, our revenue from operations for this year is 16,546 crores, which is a 4%, which is a 4% growth from a revenue perspective. Uh, if you look at it from a one-year perspective, and a 19% growth uh, from a 24-month perspective. Uh, operating profit is a very healthy 17.3%. Uh, which is uh, growing at 10% uh, on a one-year perspective and 43% on a two-year perspective. Uh, moving on to the next slide, which is slide number six, which gives our uh, Q4 performance. Uh, Q4 uh, is uh, 4,014 crores in revenue, 3% uh, up uh, on a 12-month uh, growth and a 14% up uh, on a 24-month growth. Uh, operating profit is 17.6%, which is actually higher than the full year number, but down 4% uh, versus last year. Last year, this quarter was a very solid quarter that we'd had. And however, if you look at a two-year perspective, we are up 42%. Um, moving on to the next slide, which is slide number seven, uh, share numbers are looking much better after we've uh, made the interventions which were required. Uh, we, uh, we had taken price increases and as the inflation started to die down, uh, there were some uh, pricing interventions which were required, which we made, and as a result of that, uh, our pricing competitiveness has increased and a share is moving in the right direction once again. Um, now getting to uh, slide number eight, which is uh, the regular slide that we talk about our strategic pillars. So uh, as you all know, the strategic pillars are distribution marketing, uh, leading in innovation, uh, building an adjacent business, uh, cost efficiency, and sustainability. 
to drive uh, profitable growth. Uh, we consistently have been sticking to this framework, so I'll take you through uh, one by one. Uh, driving efficiencies in distribution, we've expanded direct distribution from March 23, we were at 26.8 lakh outlets. Uh, in March 24, we are at 27.9 lakh outlets. We've strengthened our rural distribution by going from 28,000 rural distributors to 30,000 rural distributors. Our focus states continue to grow faster than our overall growth. Um, you know, so uh, we are building heft in our focus in the states. Um, moving on to the next slide, which gives an idea of, uh, you know, what, what are we doing to enhance capabilities in organized uh, channels uh, for better extraction. Uh, see, uh, organized channels are easy to get into. Uh, everyone, uh, you know, who gets into uh, the food business first uh, looks at organized channels and then, uh, you know, uh, if, if you give the right margins, etc., you'll be available uh, for consumers to buy. So it has been very important for us to really, uh, you know, up our game as far as organized channels are concerned. And if you look at on the right hand side, which is the building blocks, basically what we've done is we are building a future ready organization to compete with all of the startups. We are leveraging modern marketing methods, which is digital, uh, social media, etc. Um, we are, you know, making sure that our innovation is showcased in all of these channels. We are also promoting our premium products to make sure that they move faster and are uh, more in front of the consumers, um, you know, uh, compared to others. Agile uh, supply chain is something that we've moved uh, a lot on this year to make sure that we ensure range and uh, real-time replenishment. Uh, we've also made our uh, service levels uh, go up pretty dramatically. We've been, what is our service level this year versus yeah, last year? Uh, so our service levels have gone up by 15%. We are at uh, north of 90%, which is best in class, both in modern trade as well as e-commerce. In some of the accounts, uh, we have a service level which is in excess of 93%. So. That has also led to uh, you know a solid availability on these uh, platforms, and we are focusing uh, majorly on all the adjacent categories and new businesses. So that's what we've done uh, in this area. However, I must say that uh, we still have a long way to go because you know this was uh, one area where uh, we had not put as much focus as we are putting in the last uh, year. Uh, it's again, you got to remember that, uh, you know, this is uh, very easy to throw discounts and, you know, get some heft. So we will have to make sure that we make this into a very sustainable business. But if you look at the left side, we've seen uh, decent growths on biscuits, uh, better growths on the adjacency business and uh, solid growths on the new businesses that we've launched. So that is where um, we are as far as organized channels are concerned. Now getting to the most important uh, you know, uh, project that we have for this year, which is our route to market uh, 2.0. Uh, now the, the objective is very clear. It's to unlock growth potential. It's to create bandwidth within the system to make sure that we are able to get more products to flow through our route to market. Now, uh, you know, it, it's it's obviously uh, very critical that we leverage uh, all the data that we have in the system, and we bring in uh, a, a AI angle to make sure that we do this the right way. But let me uh, talk you through this because, uh, to my mind, this is uh, very very important. So, what did we do in group to market uh, 1.0? Uh, we split the salesman. This was done in 2014, 15. Um, <coughs> in the top outlets, in the top cities, we split uh, salesmen. We got an extra salesman to sell, uh, you know, a separate set of uh, brands and SKUs. <coughs> and that has been giving us pretty good results uh, from then onwards. Uh, the objective of Route to Market 2.0 
which is uh, starting off, we are actually, we've just kicked off the process, is to make sure that we uh, multiply uh, adjacent business uh, revenues while continuing to grow our uh, core and building it even further. So the points really are, uh, we are trying to rewrite our outlet segmentation to focus on the high pot uh, outlets. Uh, we will align a service architecture to uh, service these high potential outlets. Uh, obviously, by increasing the feet on street uh, with a split portfolio, and this time we are not going to restrict ourselves to uh, two salesmen. If there is a requirement in certain outlets for three salesmen, four salesmen, we will go, uh, you know, the, the way uh, which will give us the best results. Um, we are looking at upscaling our salesman capability as well, uh, so that they have, you know, in, it in them to extract uh, the right and more from these outlets. Uh, we are building a AI-enabled uh, predictive ordering to make sure that we assist the salesman uh, in their uh, sales efforts uh, to sell, uh, to, to drive uh, range selling. We are also upgrading, uh, uh, you know, the Salesforce automation or the handhelds that we have uh, to aid uh, quality selling. So um, the the project has has been kicked off. Uh, the pilot is planned for H2 of 24-25. Um, it's going to take time. Uh, the total project is about 11, 12 months, Ripon. Yeah. So uh, it's a it's a long project, but we want to do it very diligently. Uh, and in a lot more detail than we did in the past. Okay, moving on to uh, uh, slide number 12, which is uh, the marketing support. Uh, we have been providing uh, tremendous marketing support uh, to all our brands. Uh, Good Day, uh, the TVC has been very well received. Marigold, we continue to do what we've done in the past, uh, and we've got, uh, you know, a TVC uh, to not support uh, just just the brand, but also uh, our uh, support uh, on the uh, the program which we have had for five years, uh, Amit. Yes, we are in fifth year, getting into the fifth year now. So just talk about that quickly. Yeah. So uh, we started this journey five years back, uh, and we saw a big change in how women, uh, big changes in the society as far as women and homemakers are concerned. And there was a clear direction that they were wanting to step out of their homes uh, and just tie up and, and start their own ventures uh, and, and make uh, uh, make make uh, uh, an economic activity outside of just managing their homes. And this tied up very well with our brand's purpose, which is to enable women to do more and be more. We started off with some uh, a Britannia Marigold My Startup Challenge and for the last four editions, we've had almost a million plus uh, entries every year. Uh, and over the last four years, we've uh, funded 40 businesses out of business ideas, out of which 28 have become a reality. And as Varun will touch upon in the next slide, we now built on top of this uh, to build a comprehensive digital ecosystem to support these women entrepreneurs uh, through the year and through their journey. Thanks, Amit. Uh, NutriChoice, uh, we are uh, today the only digestive brand which uh, uses uh, Atta for uh, our products, and there is no Maida in any of the NutriChoice products today, uh, and that's uh, a powerhouse which is doing extremely well. Uh, Milk Bikis, we have Ashwin and his own entire family in the TVC, and that's doing very well in the South. Um, and uh, the northern effort is also going well. Uh, we have uh, uh, Atta uh, Milk Bikis, which is doing extremely well in the Hindi belt as well. Uh, Rusk, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, core communication. Uh, and for Winking Cow, uh, we had a very interesting intervention on uh, associating Winking Cow with the cow corner in cricket. Um, and uh, our milkshakes are doing extremely well. It's the second summer with our PET, and uh, we are seeing some uh, very good uh, volume numbers. 
Uh, moving on uh, to uh, the next slide, which is slide number 13. Uh, Amit, do you want to talk, talk us through this? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, now, we've got uh, the privilege to have a real powerhouse of brands, which have gained trust of consumers over decades. And with uh, and as it's true with every generation, one has to stay relevant. Uh, and that's really the intent of our modern marketing charter, which is to recruit consumers of the future, uh, build engagement around our products, and further deepen the brand purpose uh, that we stood for for so many years. Uh, now, Good Day is a brand uh, which is rich in its name itself, and it stands for small moments of joy and happiness uh, in the day. Uh, and uh, we're building a deep uh, program on social media to build relate relatable content for, for the Gen Z and to be a part of culture and, and to be a part of their everyday. We also ran uh, a very popular activation in this quarter called the Bank of uh, Small Bill, which received a lot of uh, buzz and acclaim on, on social media. Uh, I did touch upon how Maribold is engaging with the growing desire of women to start up. And uh, we announced on uh, Women's Day, uh, India's first exclusive online ecosystem for women-run businesses, where women uh, entrepreneurs can come and list their businesses uh, for free and without commission. Uh, they can access mentors uh, and also train up uh, to build their businesses in the future. Uh, on World Health Day, uh, NutriChart announced the launch of NutriPlus, which is a comprehensive health monitoring app uh, with uh, an artificial uh, intelligence-led algorithm at its heart, which simplifies multiple health metrics for Indian consumers into one simplified health score and therefore democratizing health measurement. We also have products that are much loved, and we realize that consumers anyways use our products, whether they are uh, biscuits, cakes, or, or cheese, uh, in making recipes. Uh, and very happy to uh, share that we've announced two destinations, one called Britannia Snacking, uh, Snacks of Ink, and the second one is Cheese It Up, which is in partnership with the Times of India, uh, which will connect consumers with, with recipes, and therefore with more engagement around our products. Thank you, Amit. Um, also, on page 14, you will see that we've, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, we've taken uh, measured uh, pricing actions to make sure that uh, we stay uh, competitive with our brands. Um, and these are some of the brands where we've taken those actions. The next slide is about innovation. Uh, we've had some consistent performance with some of the innovation products that we put in the last uh, year. Uh, so we, we we did Jim Jam Pops, uh, Treat. Uh, you know, Treat is an interesting uh, story. Uh, you know, we were always a Me Too, uh, so to say, to, uh, you know, the largest screen brand. Uh, so we decided that we need to have an archetype which is uh, unique. Uh, we had it in the, the fruit creams uh, side of the business uh, with a hole in the biscuit and we did the same for our choco vanilla and our choco choco uh, creams as well. Uh, and we've seen that with a distinct uh, look and feel, uh, this is giving us uh, very good results. Uh, similarly, 5050 Goldmal continues to do very well. Uh, we've launched uh, uh, some new products as well. We've got the Fruit and Nut Good Day, which is for modern trade. We've got the Cake Rusk. And we've got, uh, you know, the uh, bourbon milkshake. Uh, all of these are, uh, you know, at a revenue contribution of about 275 uh, crores uh, on an annualized basis. Uh, our adjacent businesses, which is the next slide, uh, have been doing well. Uh, cake, the base formats uh, did well in uh, the traditional trade. The specialty products, we've leveraged e-com. Uh, with uh, you know, uh, with very good sequential growths, Rusk has been a double-digit uh, volume growth. Uh, we struggled for a bit after COVID, but we are back with a bang. Uh, uh, bread, uh, the growth has been led by the healthy uh, part of the portfolio, uh, with improved profitability. Uh, cheese, uh, you know, we've had a, a good growth. Uh, you know, we've got some very exciting products today. We've got the Laughing Cow uh, portions, which is the, the round box that you must have seen. Uh, I think the potential for that product is a lot more than what we've been able to achieve. 
so we are hoping that this year we will see uh, dramatic results. We've also commercialized our uh, cheese factory in Ranjangao, uh, and we've started to uh, now, uh, you know, make the products and uh, supply to the market as well. Uh, are they in the market uh, yet? Uh, just moving into the trade. It's just moving into the trade, and uh, I must say that the quality of products is uh, fantastic because the quality of milk that we are collecting from our farmers is just very, very good. Uh, drinks, we are leveraging the ongoing uh, summer with uh, a very focused distribution drive, and we are capitalizing on established brands in uh, bourbon to enhance uh, brand awareness and encourage trials. Um, let's see, we've uh, improved our product. We've also improved our value proposition. We are selling our Lassi at rupees 20 now, and uh, we've got uh, one uh, new contract packer in the East, uh, and things seem to be moving in the right direction uh, as far as our drinks are concerned. The in international business has performed well um, this quarter as well as this year, and uh, this is led by the GCC as well as Americas. Uh, Nepal has been a very consistent performance, albeit uh, at a very small base, but the fact is that uh, this is an experiment which uh, we feel very proud of. We started the business with uh, exports from India. We established ourselves. Then we built a factory there, and we've been able to build a very strong uh, business in Nepal, and we are hoping that we'll be able to replicate this in more countries as we go forward. Uh, on the cost efficiency side, uh, we've had a, a, a very good year. So 23, 24 has been 7x of uh, what it was when we started off in 2013. So um, it's uh, you know it, it's very good to see that you know this uh, the, the management team has been taking this program uh, really really uh, very strongly forward. And uh, you know the components of this uh, you are aware of. It's about you know the big components. There are many more smaller components, but the big ones are truck utilization, distance traveled by our products. Uh, market damages, uh, renewable energy, which is a very big one, uh, fuel consumption, and uh, the line throughputs that we have in our plants. Uh, and we, uh, we are making good progress in all of these. Uh, ESG, uh, just to remind you, uh, you know, ESG, our construct, which is on the right hand side, four strategic pillars uh, growth, governance, resource, and people. Uh, these four pillars are supported by eight levers. These eight levers are split into 26 programs, uh, and these programs have very strong KPIs and targets for each one of us. Uh, we have a three-year strategic plan in place for all of these KPIs, and the performance of KPIs is a part of the public disclosure and uh, individual performance ratings for all our managers. Now. Uh, some of the achievements this uh, uh, this year have been we are in the top quartile as far as FMCG uh, India is concerned. Uh, we have 2.3 lakh beneficiaries through our Britannia Nutrition Foundation versus 1.98 in 21-22. We've been awarded the best employer for the fifth consecutive year in the concentric uh, employer study India, uh, which was done in the last year. Um, that's the first uh, section. Second is we've, identif we've been identified as one of the thousand leading uh, listed e ESG firms by Dun and Bradstreet, and we feel very proud of that. Uh, we've had a 33% reduction in water intensity compared to base year, which is 2019-20, uh, and this is uh, more relevant today because of. Uh, the situation that exists in some of the states where uh, water is becoming uh, a real issue. Uh, we've completed uh, ESG assessment for uh, 453 out of, of our suppliers. Uh, we've launched a marketing campaign, which is a hard pocket dustbin on preventing littering in uh, public spaces, and we've got a lot of love for that campaign. Uh, we've been awarded three accolades, uh, two gold and one silver in the ESG category during the Scotch Awards in 2023. So um, with that, moving to 
the results, the cost and profitability results, which is uh, on page 20, which gives the commodity situation. So flour and uh, uh, sugar have seen uh, uh, an inflation, but have been balanced by palm, uh, laminates, and corrugated boxes. So the commodity situation has been softish this quarter. Uh, on page 21, uh, you know, cost and profitability front, we continue to invest behind our brands in innovation. We've actioned, uh, measured pricing actions in specific channels, as I've already told you, uh, and we've delivered very solid cost efficiencies across our function. Uh, outlook, we are closely monitoring the commodity situation and assessing what are the actions that we need to take as we go forward. We, we remain vigilant on the competitive pricing uh, front, and our strategy will be to remain focused on uh, driving market share uh, while uh, sustaining profits. Um, frankly, uh, we are going to drive top line hard this year. Uh, it's tough. Uh, the year, uh, you know, what what how the last year ended will sort of you know continue for a few months. But we are hoping that as the monsoons uh, start to come and you know the the election results come, etc., uh, things will look much better. So we are going to make it uh, you know a, a mission to make sure that we get the top line to grow much faster. Um, on the financial results front, uh, page 23, slide number 23. Uh, on a 12-month basis, if you look at our uh, revenue trends, uh, we have uh, grown uh, 20, uh, 4%, right, uh, on a 12-month basis. Uh, the same number on a 24-month basis is how much? 14%. Uh, is 14, no, that's... What happened here? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost the management connection to request to Ladies and gentlemen, we have the management team back on call. So please go ahead. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, we got cut off. Uh, I don't know where we got cut off. So I'm going to take you through the revenue trends slide once again. So uh, on a full year basis, we've grown 4%. Uh, if you look at the 24-month growths on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis, it's 14% uh, uh, for Q4. And the average is what, about 18, 19? 19% 19. 19 for the full year. Um, operating profit trends, uh, we've grown on our operating profit uh, uh, number by 17.3%, right? And if you look at our uh, operating profits also, they are uh, pretty good, uh, you know, on, on, on uh, all the quarters. We've, we've been at a very healthy operating profit number. Uh, and the 24-month growths are looking very solid uh, for all of the four quarters, 22%, 58%, 52%, and even for the uh, fourth quarter, it's at 42%. Um, now, um, going to the ratio, uh, you know, the the, uh, the PNL, basically, uh, so if you look at it on a Q4 basis, a 3% growth, uh, on a uh, on net sales uh, and a 14% on 24 months uh, on a full year basis 4% and 19% uh, operating profit uh, for the quarter minus 4% but 24 months is 42% uh, full year 10% and 43% on 24 months uh, PBT again pretty similar uh, and PAT is also similar on Q4. Uh, as well as uh, for the full year as well, right? So, um, and if you were to look at uh, profit from operations as a percentage of revenue, uh, it's one of the highest that we've ever achieved. So it's at 17.3% this year. 
Uh, profit before tax is at 17.6% and PAT is at 12.9%. So healthy numbers, I would say uh, pretty good performance in the situation that, you know, the, the top line growths were uh, not happening. However, uh, I would say that the, the task for us is to make sure that the top line grows uh, much faster as we uh, go forward. And that's what we are going to focus on in this year. With that, um, we'll open the house for questions. Over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. In order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, kindly restrict to two questions at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take our first question from the line of Abneesh Roy from Luama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on uh, your key raw material wheat and how you see pricing this year at the customer level. Uh, so currently wheat uh, uh, crop uh, collection is happening. I understand it seems better than uh, last year, but wanted to get uh, your sense on the uh, full season. Uh, how do you see that? Second uh, related question is uh, you said top line uh, driving it hard will be a key focus. Last one year, what I'm seeing is your volume growth is picking up every quarter, but uh, the end sales growth is limited because of the overall uh, negative pricing at the effective level. If your commodity remains soft, uh, how do you see uh, overall pricing for the full year? Uh, because if that doesn't pick up, the volume growth remains strong, but if the pricing isn't much, then the overall uh, top line momentum will not change meaningfully. So, wanted to understand that. So, thanks, Abneesh. Uh, so, Abneesh, uh, when I say top line, I would say that uh, our focus is going to be to make sure that we grow volumes. Uh, we have been growing volumes, and I think uh, our uh, outlook on this year is not deflationary. Our outlook on this year is uh, slightly inflationary, which is a, a healthy inflation of three three percent uh, or thereabouts. Uh, the the commodity situation. See, uh, while uh, the crop seems to be fine as far as wheat is concerned, uh, the government holding has been uh, reasonably low. So there is going to be a government buying uh, because of their uh, you know uh, programs. So uh, I, I would think that uh, the, the wheat uh, outlook is uh, slightly inflationary uh, during the year. Uh, while in the infl till the election, things will not move. But beyond the election, I think it will be slightly inflationary. Uh, similarly, uh, sugar uh, crop has not been, uh, you know, a great crop. It's not bad, but it's not, uh, you know, uh, as good as the last year crop. So sugar is also going to be slightly inflationary. So I would say it's going to be a manageable uh, inflation year. And uh, we are making sure that uh, we take whatever interventions that are required to uh, you know, you know, get get to our plan numbers as far as commodity is concerned. So uh, we, we've we've started to buy. We've also made sure that we have a full program in place to uh, get the best prices for the commodities that we buy. Does that answer your question? Yes, uh, quite helpful. Uh, one related question, Varun, will be on uh, your RTM 2.0. Uh, so uh, you have mentioned that uh, this will be pilot uh, uh, project in uh, H2 of FY25, which means FY26 will be the real year in terms of benefit and uh, going ahead after that. So wanted to understand when you are saying a hard focus on growth coming back, FY26, could you talk about uh, in terms of at least some benefits, what could be there? I understood the process, but in terms of KRA for this project for FY26, what could it be? 
No, so uh, I had put everything on that slide. Uh, if, if there's more detail required, we can uh, uh, chat about that separately, Arnish. But uh, frankly, the, the pilot is to make sure that, see, the, we, are, we are doing this with Dane, as you know, and uh, the, the process has already started. We just want to make sure that we put all ducks in a row, then we test it out in a pilot market, and then we roll it out. So you're right about the fact that the, the full impact will be towards the end of this year. Now, um, obviously, all of those uh, items that I had listed on that slide are uh, going to be ticked. And with that, uh, obviously, uh, you know, the, the benefits are going to be that the adjacency businesses will get their time in the sun. Uh, we will make sure that, you know, our quality of salesmen is right up there and they are doing range selling and selling more SKUs and, you know, we have a, a better presence in all of these high potential outlets. So I think it's all reasonably clear, but if there's anything more that you need, we're very happy to chat with you separately. Thank you. Yeah. We'll take a next question from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask the adjacencies that you highlighted, the non-biscuits portfolio, what is the current share of sales and uh, how? more importantly, how does the margins contrast in this portfolio versus the biscuits business? Would you be able to give us a qualitative sense? Sorry, just repeat that. Your voice wasn't very clear. Uh, sorry, sir. Is this better? Um, Mr. Mahatma, yes, I request you to use your handset mode, please. Give me one second, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Is this better? Sorry? Yes, it's better. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to check, sir, that in the non biscuit portfolio, what is the revenue salience right now? And could you give us a sense on how do the margins stack up uh, versus the biscuits portfolio? Would it be possible? So adjacencies, are you talking about adjacencies? So yeah, the non-biscuits, basically, uh, the the uh, non the adjacencies, yes, sir. It's about it's about uh, 25%. And sir, would you give us some qualitative sense on how the margins would be for this segment? Is this better than biscuits, similar, slightly lower? Any some any sense over here, sir? Average would be maybe uh, slightly better. The oh. gross margins. The net margins will not be, but the gross margins will be slightly better. Got it, sir. And sir, just a bookkeeping question. Uh, you know, wanted to just understand, A, uh, are there any one-off costs in the other expenses in, seen in this quarter? And so what were the volume growth was for the quarter? That's all from my side. Uh, there are very small. There, there's nothing uh, worth mentioning uh, as far as this quarter is concerned. Uh, there was, uh, you know, the, the advertising and sales expenses have been higher this month because we, uh, we've we not been supporting our brands uh, as well as we should because of the inflationary uh, environment that we went through. Uh, so I think uh, o o overall uh, situation is that we are now getting back to a, a normal way of doing business. Uh, it's not like, you know, uh, what we've seen in the last two years. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Varun, uh, let me just begin from what you said. You're looking towards normalized way of running business. Uh, for FI24, you had you know revenue growth of 4%. Uh, could you split uh, what was the volume growth and uh, the price growth or deflation during FI24. Uh, extending that a bit, you talked about 3% odd inflation that you anticipate in FI25. Uh, what is the normalized volume growth expectations given all the interventions you know that you're doing in the business? Um, that's the first question. Yeah, so uh, the, the situation on volume and revenue is uh, for the last year has been, they are almost at par, right? So volume and revenue are the same. However, if you look at it by quarter, it's a very different story. So uh, the last quarter, the volume growth is two times the revenue growth, right? So um, I think the, the volume growth this year, we expect them to be uh, quite solid. Uh, obviously, 
uh, barring the entry into the year, which is uh, pretty similar to uh, the year that's gone by, uh, and post-election, post-monsoon, uh, you know, I would think that post-election, post-monsoon, uh, we would be aiming towards a double-digit volume growth for sure. Understood. Uh, the second question was on margins. You know, uh, your gross margins have continued to surprise despite price cuts. I uh, wanted to understand what is the optimal margin expense expectations that we should build into next year. You ended FI24 with almost a gross margin of 42%, a better margin of 19% to the domestic business. Uh, so do you think there is further upside on these from these levels considering you know commodity prices are uh, a bit benign? You talked about a bit of inflation coming back post inflation elections. And you also, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, allude to need for more ANT, you know, and plus uh, investments in all the initiatives they're doing. So I know, uh, you know, so should how should we think about margin outlook, you know, given there's a big focus on top line momentum? Uh, would you give away some margins or you think these are sustainable margins? Thank you. Uh, no, so uh, the, the the objective is not to give away margins, but uh, but but to make sure that we spend uh, the right uh, amount in terms of innovation, in terms of brand building, uh, in terms of all the projects that we are doing. So you know we we have this uh, GT, uh, RTM project which we spoke about. We also have a replenishment project coming up. Uh, to make sure that we make that more efficient. So I would say um, not a major change from what we've seen. Upsides, I would not expect upsides on this, uh, but uh, not a major change from where we are today. Thank you. Yeah. We'll take a next question from the line of Sheila Rati from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just a follow-on on the margins question, uh, would it be fair to say that near term there could be some negative impact coming on margins uh, given, you know, the RTM 2.0, which uh, we would be initiating, which could have some upfront cost uh, versus the cost savings, which we could have in future years. Uh, second part to this is, uh, you know, uh, the NPD to sales number, uh, is that correct that 275 crores is the NPD number, uh, which is, you know, about 2% of the overall sales? Uh, this, I would believe, is much lower than where we want it to be. And third is, you know, the focus around the adjacent portfolio. So, you know, how should we think of margins on that aspect, especially, you know, with the next 12 months or so? No, so our uh, target uh, for the entire set of MPDs is uh, north of 3.5%. So this, we've spoken about the NPDs that we put on that slide. So uh, we will continue with that, uh, you know, target of 3.5% of uh, overall revenue as far as, uh, you know, the NPDs are concerned. Um, as far as margins are concerned, see, um, uh, the, the way we look at it is that this year is a year of top line growth. And if it means uh, taking a, a, a short term hit on margins because of all the projects, because of all that we are doing, we will be willing to do that. But it's not going to be uh, dramatically different from where we are at. So uh, that's that's the objective, really. To make sure that we are future ready, we have a, a very solid uh, business model as we move ahead from here. Uh, and this benefits us in the future. Um, and similarly on brands, uh, you know, we will make sure that we, uh, you know, spend, spend the requisite uh, amounts on our uh, existing powerhouse brands as well as uh, some of the new products that we are launching. So uh, that's how we planned it. Uh, it's not going to be a dramatic change, but uh, might be a slight change from where we are at, uh, which obviously will come back uh, in due course. Understood. And just a bookkeeping question. Uh, you know, when you talked about the adjacent portfolio at 25%, uh, where would dairy be uh, right now, and where do you expect that to be, say, in the next two to three years? So dairy is uh, we have we have as you know we've taken a big punt on dairy. Uh, we've invested uh, 
fairly large uh, sums of money in uh, creating a backend uh, and you know we we also got a very strong partnership which is the joint venture with bell uh, for cheese so our expectations on dairy are uh, are big right we uh, I, i wouldn't say that we've uh, achieved what we had planned for ourselves we are short of that but uh, i'm confident that with uh, you know now our plant going on stream we are producing really good quality products plus uh, you know bell bringing in their expertise their products uh, i don't know if you know but you know this uh, these portions that we have uh, uh, selling in the market are currently coming from vietnam from the bell factory in vietnam similarly the sachets are also made in vietnam so at some stage once we get to the threshold on these products we will start to produce them in the country uh, that will give us a lot more competitiveness uh, we are looking at a, 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 a lot of innovations beyond that see uh, till now what's happened is that uh, everyone's been doing the same thing everyone's been doing a block uh, you know a cube and uh, slices we are the first ones to uh, you know buck the trend on that and bring in products which are very different right uh, so we will continue to do that and uh, the the uh, the milkshakes have been doing well uh, you know we as a company we are not a soft drink company so we uh, initially we struggled to make sure that we understood you know how to deal with a product like this um, you know so i think we are, we are getting there and despite that despite our uh, you know inadequacies as far as soft drinks are concerned or milkshakes are concerned we've done extremely well now we are building that uh, expertise within the system uh, we are also making sure that in this uh, rtm 2.0 we bring that to life as well so i think uh, the 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 outlook on dairy uh, to me is uh, fairly positive uh and uh, we we will make sure that we do all that's necessary to uh, you know make ourselves very different from all of the others in the marketplace thank you we have a next question from the line of arnab mitra from goldman sachs please go ahead yeah hi varun uh, uh, your first uh, uh, my mitra, first may i request you to use your handset mode please you're not clearly audible uh okay is it better now uh yes please go ahead yeah my first question was varun you are focus on growth this year uh do you think it will be driven more by the biscuits portfolio or a big scale up in the adjacency is and if adjacency is a big scale up uh, you know do you think your existing portfolio is good enough or do you have plans to add more sub segments to some of these adjacencies that you operate in yeah no so it's a good question see um, our focus from biscuits can never go away because that's uh, a bulk of our business and uh, growth on biscuits will always be uh, a very important focus for us however uh, the objective really will be that the adjacency business grows at uh, one and a half times what our biscuit portfolio grows at and uh, this year we are not going to do uh, too much more as far as uh, new categories are concerned if you think about it we entered a lot of new categories and we would want to uh, consolidate our position in those categories and make sure that we uh, build heft in those categories this year we've got a lot more on our plate uh, as we go forward we've got uh, a, a lot more in our funnel but we will desist from doing that to make sure that we uh, uh, get a very strong uh, sense of growth and also you know till our rtm 2.0 is ready we don't want to create too much confusion in the sales system so that's our plan for this year but if you think about it we've got a lot more categories to build uh, which we launched uh, last year thanks so much for that and my last question was on pricing when you mentioned this quarter like pricing is probably like minus 3 uh, if i assume volume is double of your revenue 
So your comment on a three percent inflation next year would it be fair to assume it's more dark and bright? You would expect first half to still be a deflation and significant pricing in the second half to get to that inflationary outlook for the top line. See, it's not about first half. I think the first quarter is flattish, but uh, as we go forward, uh, post elections we will start to see inflation. Is my uh, forecast. Uh, and uh, I'll be very happy if uh, I'm proven to be wrong. But it seems that post elections we will start to see, uh, you know, four four percent kind of inflation. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Mihir Shah from Nomura. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question, sir. Sir, anecdotally, uh, uh, so my question is on market share. Anecdotally, the, you know, the small and regional players seem to be doing well. However, we see that you are also gaining share. Uh, are you also seeing any trend about small and regional players doing better, and they have like stopped? Uh, uh, you are doing better now, uh, or how should one triangulate this uh, pieces about both small do, doing better and you also gaining share? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Now, uh, let me give you my point of view on that. See, uh, what happens is that uh, once there's a, a very large margin that is seen in a category, especially with the market leader, uh, there are a lot more players which come into the country and which, which start to do that business, right? So, uh, frankly, it's, uh, you know, the, the point is that that's what happened, right? Uh, post the inflationary environment, when you know we took a lot of pricing, everyone saw our profits because we declare our profits every uh, quarter, and you know a lot more competition started to come in, and we started to see them move up in terms of share. Um, however, uh, on delving uh, more into it, uh, we figured out that their share situation was because of their spreading their wings from their core market because these local players usually come into one state and they are regional players uh, then you know some of them were spreading their wings into other markets and gaining share um, however it's not easy to do that now you can do that in uh, organized trade because organized trade, uh, you can throw money and uh, certainly get uh, facings. But uh, doing it in traditional trade has its own uh, pitfalls. And uh, then, you know, you start to get product back, et cetera, et cetera. So what we've seen of late is that while people spread their wings, they, uh, you know, started to feel the pressure in newer markets. and. We've seen these uh, shares uh, stabilize of late. And uh, I think that the, the trick really is that you've got to keep, uh, you know, the, the, the profit uh, to a certain level. If you go way over the top, then even a, a new player can come in and, uh, you know, start to uh, eat, uh, you know, bite at your ankles uh, in, in, in some way or form. Uh, and we've learned it. Uh, we are going to make sure that we apply this, uh, not just in our biscuits business, but in some of our other businesses like cake and rusk as well. Uh, and uh, I think we've done it quite well in bread. Uh, the other categories, we'll make sure that we uh, understand how to contain these local players uh, without really, uh, you know, taking a cut on our profits, overall profits. Thank you. Yeah. So that clarifies. Uh, thanks so for that. So my second question, actually, I just wanted to borrow your confidence on the volume growth. Double. I I I believe you said double digit volume growth is what you're gunning for in FI25, uh, and also there will be some inflation of four or three to four or percent. Um, so how should one really again think about this? Uh, you know, dichotomy again, you know, in, uh, with inflation will also be there, but it will also lead to double digit volume growth. Sorry, I missed that question completely. Yes. There is going to be an inflation. How do you expect to grow? Yeah, no, so see, our, uh, if you look at our base volume numbers, they are uh, not, not great numbers. 
and i do think that the market is ready for uh, getting back to the growth see if you think about it the last uh, decade or so uh, you know for most businesses uh, volume growth have not been where they should have been right if you look at the previous decade you know the, that was the decade where volumes revenues everything was booming i think it's it's time that uh, most consumer businesses now start to see uh, you know the 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 positive uh, positives coming out of the economic growth in the country uh, i think it's been a, a little bit of a push and pull but hopefully uh, this year we will start to see that come back is my forecast thank you we'll take a next question from the line of harit kapoor from investec please go ahead and yeah, good morning uh, my first question is on the distribution side so uh, while you did uh, you know mention about uh, you know the rtm uh, uh, 2.0 that you're looking at uh, how do we kind of think of it for the next say 12 to 18 months would that uh, uh, project take precedence over expanding the direct reach and strengthening rural distribution or do you believe that this uh, you know both will go hand in hand just wanted to get your sense on that no these will both go hand in hand uh, see uh, this project rtm uh, that rtm 2.0 that we are talking about is more at the top end right and uh, it's about the high potential outlets get, get, getting the right amount of service the right kind of salesman uh, you know the right uh, bouquet of uh, brands and skus uh and the the distribution expansion project is more about uh you know the, the bottom end of the pyramid which the project which is about rural distribution and uh, you know even today our rural presence and our rural share is still lower than our urban presence and urban share so uh, we cannot take our eye off uh, our rural uh, agenda and hence Uh, both will go hand in hand so just to uh, slice it into three segments so you so the top end really is the organized trade uh, and we have seen pretty good growth in modern trade e-commerce as well as the market share increase the next one are the high port outlets which one is talking about and today uh, you know the entire service architecture is obsolete which we are planning to upgrade which means that you know these high potential outlets will be able to send more diverse categories will be able to give them more service uh, the third part really is the urban where there is a massive growth which is happening both from consumption point of view and also outlet addition point of view so therefore that's the area where you know this entire distribution expansion has to uh, really accelerate and the fourth is rural uh, so rural where under leveraged both from market share point of view the direct distribution point of view and uh, you know the, the intent there is to keep adding more number of uh, villages the salient villages so that we can extract more and more from rural as well got it and and just one last question on the organized channel part uh, uh, you know what is the share of this organized channel piece for you now uh, you need to show that all three businesses have done very well in fy24 new adjacent and discrete so what's the share of the overall mix now for you so overall mix as in you're talking about the contribution of uh, yes, the, the product or are you talking about discrete market share no the contribution of modern trade and e-commerce the overall revenue contribution of uh, modern trade and ecom to our overall business is what about 15% yeah 15% so uh, and uh, it, it's uh, the the ecom part is what about 3 and a half percent yeah 3 and a half and 12 and a half or 12 uh, approximately is 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 the number for uh this so but you know we we see this to grow but not dramatically uh this will go from 15 to 16 maybe 17 as we go forward uh and uh, just to remind you this is uh, our share in this channel is about the same as our share in uh, overall market and uh, our potential in this cha- in these channels is a lot more because you know from uh, innovation standpoint 
from uh, the quality of products and the, the salience of brands, etc., we are much stronger in this channel. So the objective will be to uh, get some uh, traction and move our shares up in this channel. Thank you. We'll take a next question from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just needed some data points. So if you can give us a broad split of the action categories in SY24, you mentioned that it contributes about 25%, which is about 40 million. Can you talk about how large is uh, individual products, K, Crust, Dairy, Red Cross, huh? if you can give us a broad breakup? So K, Crust, uh, Dairy are about the same size. Uh, K, Crust, Dairy, uh, Bread are about the same size. All four businesses are about the same size. And then we have the, the fledgling businesses, which is uh, uh, Croissant, which is uh, you know about uh, what what would that be as a percentage? About point point seven percent, and uh, we've got some other small businesses which are uh, negligible really because we've just started off the the bars business, the makana etc. All of those are very very small, so uh, that's not worth mentioning. But uh, the the four businesses are about the same size, so you can just take. Yeah, and international like nine ten billion, like eight, eight, around eight billion. Uh, you're talking in dollar terms? No, no, I mean like say, rupee terms. Huh? Cake, cake, rice, etc. Will be what like billion, billion rupees? Billion. He's talking billions. Okay. Yeah, about that much. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mayank Mundra for closing comments. Over to you. Thanks everyone for spending time with us on this call today. We look forward to interacting with you again. Thank you. On behalf of Britannia Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. <laughs>